Oh, the, the, the two engineers, as you saw before, were uh, Cal Christian and Joel Hitt. And over a couple of years, one, one weekend, uh, somebody, I don't remember who, thought that, you know, there was a, an outside chance that we could reach 100,000 feet with our F-101. <laughs> uh, now, that, that was a pretty high altitude when uh, most, very few of our aircraft could even reach 50,000 feet. So the next couple of days, Joel and, and Cal figured out that if I could get up to like Mach 1.9 at 40,000 feet, that I stood an outside chance of getting up to 100,000 feet. And, and indeed, uh, a few days later, when we thought the uh, the weather was right, uh, we looked for the opportunity to combine our attempt to get up to 100,000 feet with a, uh, a regular uh, flight test mission that the guys in Hartford had uh, had proposed and, and given to us. And indeed, I got up to my max speed at about 40,000 feet and pulled up the nose and. Uh, and, and at that, at Mach 2, the, uh, the first uh, 10,000 feet really came pretty fast. And maybe even the second 10,000 feet came pretty fast. Um, but then I sensed that I was not uh, on, the, on the appropriate angle of climb. So I chose to increase my angle of, uh, of climb. And I got up to about 70,000 feet. And all of, uh, this is a two-engine aircraft, as you know. At about 70,000 feet, I had a fire warning light come on on the left engine, as I recall. Now, the standard practice in an, in an F-10, in, in any aircraft in those days, was if you had the fire warning light came on, come on, you, you bailed out. <laughs> now, you can understand that there was zero chance that I was going to bail out at 70,000 feet out of my F-101. Um, you know, I don't know which is the, the next slide. Okay, I've got two slides to go. That was uh, doing that the G testing on the F-101. <laughs> and when I said I was not about to bail out of my F-101 up at 70,000 feet, in fact, uh, my, uh, my modus operandi was not to bail out of the, uh, any aircraft at, under any condition. Um, and I don't know, six or eight months later, they sent out a replacement, and he began flying alternate flights with me. So there were two of us who were flying those three aircraft. And I kept on telling him, "Be careful about our the fire warning system, because the fire warning system is not operating correctly." Uh, and I was getting a fire warning light, uh, you know, at least once a week on one of the aircraft. And uh, I said, don't bail out. We don't have an engine problem. You're not on fire. Shut down the engine and uh, do a couple of things. And you will see that the engine is not on fire. So then you can continue in and land. Well, he had his first fire warning light. And uh, he decided that my instructions weren't appropriate for him. And here you can see a slightly used F-100 on the, <laughs> on the desert floor with an even more used J-57 engine in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was not me. <laughs> so getting back to uh, my uh, F-101 F flight up at 70,000 feet. So obviously I had to shut down that one engine that had the fire warning light come on. And then as soon as I uh, shut that engine down, 
the other engine went into uh, compression stall. <laughs> so now I had one one out and one not operating, and kind of obviously the only solution is to uh, to come down. And there were two ways to come down. One was to turn the aircraft uh, upside down and, and uh, complete the uh, a half of a of a loop and, and get the nose down that way. But the other solution was to, in my view, was to keep right side up the whole time and, and just ease over the top, hopefully uh, not stalling as I go up over the top, uh, but, but, at, but at least being in, in reasonable control. And, and that is what I did. And that was the or a picture of uh, going over the top at about 75,000 feet in the net uh, uh, 101. Um, I thought, at the time, I thought that I might have been the very first guy to have seen a view of outer space from an aircraft. But obviously, uh, uh, and, and now all of you guys know what it's like because you see, so many pictures from outer space, from uh, the, uh, the space shuttle and, and those flights. But in any event, at the time, I thought that was a, a unique view um, on the one hand. However, a little while later, I found it, 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 uh, I was reminded that NASA had been flying that X-1, which is a rocket flight, and they had operated 75,000 feet. So I, I was not the first. Uh, I was probably the first civilian, but uh, not the first uh, uh, pilot. And then a couple of years later, we got a couple more aircraft, F-8Us, as you see in the background. Uh, the, the original F-100 is in the foreground, and our F-100 is in the background. Uh, and then they sent out another guy, so there were three people who were flying these aircraft. And, uh, and that was the end. However, even though that was the end of my particular participation in the uh, development of the, uh, the J-57, I really want to get back to the engineers, because without you engineers, Ted and Jack, all of this would not have been possible. And one final comment. When I was going out to Edwards the very first time, <coughs> one of the guys said to me, and I, I really don't remember who it was, he said, you know, you shouldn't have any trouble with the, uh, with the engines. The engines are really pretty reliable. We, we don't <coughs> expect that you're going to have any trouble whatsoever. I'd been out there for two years, and I came back, and I met another engineer, and he said, uh, you know, you were really pretty lucky, because, because all those engines were really not very reliable. <laughs> and indeed, I was lucky. I had a great opportunity to work for Fred Whitney, working with a great bunch of guys. Uh, did I mention that Jim Peed was the uh, the manager out there at uh, Edwards, and he was a super, super nice guy to work with. Um, Brett Swallow, Joel Head, and, uh, and Cal Christian were, were great guys. We all had a wonderful time together, and I think we did a uh, pretty good job. Thanks very much.